Regain your walking balance and confidence. Hi, my name is Doug. I've been a physical therapist for 30 years and I specialize in helping people learn to walk again. In this video, I'm going to show you 14 exercises that you can do to regain your ability to walk. Heel to toe standing. You want to do this exercise where you can hold something sturdy like a countertop or the back of a chair. You want to have your feet in the heel to toe position. That means one foot with the heel touching the toe of the other foot. Then what you want to do is stand up straight with your feet in this position and let go of what you're holding on to. If you can do this and hold that position, the goal is to get to 20 seconds without holding on. But a lot of people are going to have trouble with this exercise. If you're really struggling with it, one thing you can do to make it easier is to have a little bit of space between your feet. So instead of touching your heel to toe, have about a two to three inch space between your feet. Another thing you can do in the beginning when you're getting used to it is have one finger on the countertop when you try to do it. One finger is a lot harder than putting both hands. But over time, you want to let go with that finger and try to balance just on your two feet. The goal is to balance for 20 seconds with the right leg forward and 20 seconds with the left leg forward, repeating that three times on each side. But in the beginning, you might only be able to do a couple of seconds with each leg forward. You just want to work on this. It can take weeks, if not months, of practicing this every day before someone can get to the goal of 20 seconds without holding on. Weight shifts. To do weight shifts, you'll need something sturdy to hold on to. You can use a countertop or the back of a chair, anything that's sturdy. To do this correctly, you want to grab with both hands on something sturdy and then put all your weight on one leg while you lift the other foot off the ground. Then you're going to shift your weight over to the other leg. You want to repeat this going right to left. Now, the main thing that people have trouble with this is they don't shift fully onto both sides. You want to have both of your hips over your leg on the right and both of your hip, both sides of your hip over your left leg on the left. And that means shifting fully in each direction. Most people, what they'll do is not shift much at all. The reason people shuffle is they're not shifting their weight. And that's why this exercise is so helpful. The goal of this is to do this for 20 repetitions, just one set of 20. This isn't really an exercise as much as it is a balanced training thing. So you only want to try to work up to doing 20 repetitions to the right and 20 to the left. Many people have trouble with this and they can only do three or four repetitions before they find it difficult. That's fine. You have to start somewhere. I would tell you to practice this over the course of weeks, if not months, to get better at it. Hip flexion. To do this exercise, you need something sturdy to hold on to. You can grab on the back of a chair or hold a countertop or even grab your kitchen sink. Something sturdy. And what you're going to do is lift your leg up as high as it will go. So it's sort of like you're marching. You're bending your hip lifting your knees as high as they'll go, then putting that back down and doing the other side. You want to march back and forth, right, left, right, left. The goal of this exercise is to do three sets of 10 reps. That means doing right, left, right, left, 10 times on each leg, then resting for a minute, then repeating that two more times. In the beginning, it's fine if you can't do this. Just really do as many as you can, breaking it up into three sets. If you practice this once a day, every day, you will see an improvement in your hip flexion. Hip abduction. To do this exercise safely, you need something sturdy like the back of a chair, a countertop, a bar, something sturdy to hold on to. You want to stand up straight and lift your leg up to the side as far as it will go. 
Then you want to bring that side down and lift the other side up. You want to go back and forth, right and left. The goal of this exercise is to do three sets of 10 reps. That means doing right and left 10 times, resting for a minute, and then repeating that two more times. In the beginning, it's fine if you can only do two or three reps. This is a particularly hard exercise for some people because their hip abductors are very, very weak. So in the beginning, it's fine if you only do two or three reps. You want to just keep at it. Oftentimes, this takes weeks, if not months, to get back their hip abduction strength. Hamstring curls. To do this, you want to be standing up and holding on to something to keep your balance. Then you want to bend your knee up behind you like you're trying to kick your bottom. So you want to lift your leg up as high as it'll go, and what that's doing is tightening the hamstring muscle. You want to hold it for a second and bring it back down, and then do the other leg. Your goal for this exercise is to do 20 repetitions on each leg for three sets. But in the beginning, you might only be able to do five or six repetitions for three sets. You want to slowly build yourself up over time. Don't feel bad if you can't do three sets of 20 in the beginning. That's your goal. Wall leans. To do this exercise, you want to be standing against a wall. Where you put your feet will determine how difficult the exercise is. So in the beginning, just bring your heels about four inches away from the wall. Then what you want to do is cross your arms across your chest, and then using your muscles and your feet, pull your body off the wall. This is a difficult exercise, and a lot of people will find themselves cheating by either pushing their bottom against the wall or by bending forward to get themselves off the wall. What you want to do if you find that you're doing that is bring your feet closer to the wall. The only thing that you should be using to pull yourself forward is the muscles in the top of your, in the front of your shin which are the muscles that lift your toes. So if you find that you're not lifting your toes as you bring yourself off the wall, you're either doing it without your feet far enough away from the wall or you're cheating and using your bottom or your upper body to push off. So when you're doing it correctly, your feet are a few inches away from the wall. You're actually lifting your toes up as you come forward. Now, to make this exercise harder, you want to bring your feet further and further away from the wall. But there's a limit. Obviously, when you get your feet too far away from the wall, you're not going to be able to bring yourself off the wall without cheating. So I would say the maximum is about 12 to 18 inches of your heel away from the wall. I would practice this five to 10 times every day. There's not really sets and reps to doing this. This is really more of a balance challenge activity, but it's a great way to practice bringing your weight forward. So many people have trouble learning to bring their weight forward when they're walking. They end up putting all their weight on their heel, which is why a lot of people fall backwards, not forwards, when they stumble. This is just a good exercise that builds proprioception, awareness of where your body is in space, and helps you. If you ever lose your balance and you're falling backwards, this will help you bring your weight back forward again. Single leg standing. To do single leg standing, you need something sturdy in front of you. You can use a countertop or the back of a chair, anything that's sturdy. You want to lift one leg up and shift all your weight over to the one leg you're going to stand on and then try to let go. Your goal with this exercise is to let go for 20 seconds before you have to grab the counter and then shift to the other leg and do the same thing for 20 seconds. We want you to be able to do this three times on each leg for 20 seconds. But most of the clients that I see and most of the people I work with, this can take months to get to this goal. In the beginning, it's fine if you have to hold the countertop with one finger or even one hand just to get used to this exercise. 
The key to this exercise, the thing that most people struggle with, is they're not shifting their weight enough. When you stand on one leg, you have to shift all of your weight over onto that side to allow you to stand on one leg without holding on. So if you find that you're having to grab the countertop, you're probably not shifting all your weight over. That's the key to this exercise. I find that people take doing this every single day, sometimes twice a day, for four to six weeks before they really see an improvement and can balance on one leg. Partial squatting. To do a partial squat, you need something sturdy to hold on to. You can use the back of a chair, a countertop. All you want to do is bend your knees and your hips until you're in a partial squat position. I'm not recommending going all the way down to a 90 degree squat. You can if you feel strong enough to do that. But in this exercise, we're only going down to maybe a 45 degree bend in our knees. You want to go down and then immediately straighten back up and stand back up straight again. If you're worried about your strength, have a chair behind you when you do this. A great way to do this is to go into the kitchen and do this at the, at the kitchen sink with a chair or wheelchair right behind you in case you can't make it, you can sit down. Your goal with this exercise is to do three sets of 10 reps, resting one minute between each set. In the beginning, you might only be able to do two or three repetitions before you feel that you're fatigued. Just rest and then try to repeat that two or three times. Oftentimes, people take weeks, if not months, to get their quad strength up enough to be able to do three sets of 10 reps. Heel to toe walking. To do this activity, you just need something sturdy to hold on to. You can use a countertop, the back of a chair, you can even use your kitchen sink. You wanna walk heel to toe two to three steps in one direction, then grab onto that object, turn around, and walk two to three steps in the other direction. When you're walking heel to toe, you're actually putting one foot in front of the other with your heel touching your toe. Your goal for this exercise is to do this three times in each direction without holding on. In the beginning, you might have to hold on the entire time or at least put one finger on the countertop the whole time. That's fine. People don't automatically have, people don't automatic, people aren't automatically able to do this exercise. Most of my clients have to practice this for weeks, if not months, every single day before they get good enough to do it without holding on. Sidestepping. To do this exercise, you just need something sturdy to hold on to. A countertop or some type of bar on the wall works the best. All you want to do is stand up straight and take a step to the side. You want to do two to three steps in one direction and then go two to three steps in the other direction. The reason is you don't want to get away from the countertop. So you want to go three steps in one direction and then three steps in the other direction. The goal is to do this three times without holding on. So that means stepping three steps to the right without holding on, three steps to the left holding on, repeating that three times without holding on. Oftentimes, it takes weeks, if not months, of practicing this to be able to do that. So many people have trouble with this exercise. This is a great way to improve your balance and your stability. Backward walking. To do this exercise safely, you need a countertop or the back of a chair or something to hold on to just in case you lose your balance. You simply want to stand up straight and step backwards two to three steps. You don't want to step so many steps that you're away from that you're away from something to hold on to, but you want to do two to three steps in one direction, then carefully turn around and go two to three steps in the other direction. Your goal is to do two to three steps in both directions, repeating that three times without holding on. But it's probably going to take weeks of practicing this, if not months, before you're going to be able to do it without holding anything. Stepping forward over an object. 
To do this activity, you need two things. One is something sturdy to hold on to, like a countertop or the back of a chair. And the other is something to step over. You can roll up a towel or put a piece of tape on the ground. Just something that you can see that you know you have to step over. What you want to do is step over with one leg and then with the other, and then step over the same object back to your starting position. Now it's fine in the beginning to hold the countertop the whole time. It's hard to do this exercise and for a lot of people, this requires a lot more balance than they're used to having. This is a great balance challenging activity, but you want to be safe. Your goal with this exercise is to step forward three times without holding the countertop. But in the beginning, it's fine if you hold on and it's fine if you have to put one finger or your whole hand on the countertop the entire time. Sidestepping over an object. To do this exercise, you need something sturdy to hold on to, like a countertop, and you also need something to step over. It can be a, a towel on the floor or any kind of object, just something small that you can step over. Then what you want to do is stand straight, maybe glide your hands on top of the countertop and step over this object to the right bringing both feet over onto one side, and then step over the object to the left, bringing both feet over. You do need to step far enough that there's room for your other foot to come down. Now your goal with this exercise is to do this three times to the right and three times to the left without holding on, but that can be very difficult. A lot of times people have to hold on a whole bunch the first few times that they try this, and then even after they've done it a bunch of times, they're still putting one finger on the countertop while they're doing it. That's okay. That's how you get your balance back again, is by practicing this balance challenging activity. Backward stepping onto a step. To do this activity, you'll need two things. Something sturdy to hold on to, like a countertop or the back of a chair, and an aerobic step or something firm to stand on top of. What you want to do is stand facing away from the step, put one hand on the countertop, and then with the right leg step up, and then the left leg step up. You want to have both feet on top of the step, and then step forward to step down. Now in the beginning, it's fine to hold on to the countertop to balance yourself, your goal with this activity is to go backwards and forwards, stepping back up and back down three times without holding on. Oftentimes, it takes weeks, if not months, of practicing this every day before you're going to be able to do it that well without holding on. With any balance exercise, you want to practice it at least for five minutes a day. So no matter what the exercise, you want to keep repeating it for about five minutes. There's not a specific number of sets and reps, you just want to do it for about five minutes and try to practice that every single day. So many people come to see me because they've stopped walking. They might have fallen, they might have had a broken bone like a broken hip or broken leg, they might have had surgery or a stroke, they might even have a neurologic disease like Parkinson's. There are a lot of things that can get someone to stop walking, but once you've stopped walking, it's so difficult to get that ability back again. In this video, I'm going to take you step by step through exercises that can take you from not being able to walk to being able to walk again. Now the best way to use this video is to start with the first exercise and keep practicing it until you've mastered it. In other words, do it until you feel like it's an easy exercise and only then go to the next exercise. I have tried to put this in order from easiest to hardest, but everyone is different. You might find that the first exercise is, is really difficult, but the second and third one are hard. I've done my best to try to make it for everybody in order, but it may not be perfect for you, so you just have to use your own judgment. With all of these, you don't want to try anything that puts you at risk for falling, so you always want to have something nearby to grab onto and a sturdy chair behind you, so just in case you lose your balance, you have something to sit back onto. I hope you found this video helpful. If you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe to my channel. 
And if you would like to work with a therapist or trainer that's trained in the techniques that you just saw, they can go to proprioceptiverehab.com to get training from me in exactly how to do this. I offer a course in proprioceptive rehabilitation for physical therapists and personal trainers.